Hello there, Chris P. Williams here with another Affinity Photo tutorial. And today we're going to be working on this photograph of Matt and young Theo. And this is a straight out of camera JPEG from my studio in a recent shoot. And what I'm going to do today, I'm going to show you a method of making your photographs pop. And it works particularly well with um, male, male models, um, of which Matt is very much one. And to start, all, all I'm going to do is I'm going to duplicate my background twice. So I'm just going to press Control and J, and that's Command and J on a Mac. And I'm going to select the top layer that I've just created, and I'm going to go to Layer, New Live Filter Layer, and I'm going to go to High Pass Filter, and everything turns grey, but don't worry, it's meant to do that. And the first thing you need to do is check this monochrome box here, and then slide your radius slider to the right, Normally find about three, three and a half will do the job, but just for the purposes of this tutorial, I'm going to pump it up to about five just so that you can see the effect a little bit more pronounced. And once you're happy, we need to go to blend mode and select hard light. And we can close that down. And we can now go to layer, merge down. And now I'm going to repeat that process. So just layer, New Life Filter layer, go down to High Pass Filter again, and again we're going to pump that up, maybe about three or four this time will do the job, but I'm going to go to about five, just to exaggerate it for the tutorial, and again make sure you check the monochrome box, and this time set the blend mode to soft light. Press OK, and again go to layer, and merge down. And now what we have is a sharpened layer. If I zoom in on this image and I turn that layer off, you can see the effect we've had. So just control and zero to recenter the image. And the next thing we need to do is create a non-destructive burn and dodge layer. And to do that, I'm just gonna click on the icon in the bottom right hand corner of the layers palette, the little checkerboard and that will create a new layer for me. And I'm gonna to go to my Fill Bucket Tool and I'm gonna to go to the Swatches tab. If, if you can't see the Swatches tab, just switch from color to Swatches and scroll across until you find 50%, black 50%. So I've effectively selected 50% gray for my fill color. And now it's simply a case of just clicking in that area and fill in that pixel layer with medium gray. Now we need to go to the drop down blend options and we're going to select overlay. And we now have a layer on which we can burn and dodge. And to do that, we simply need to go to the burn tool. And what we're going to attempt to do now with the burn and dodge tool is accentuate the shadows and highlights on Matt's face and torso. And to do this, it's simply a case of zooming in on your subject with your burn tool selected Make sure that you've got tonal range as shadows and a flow of 100% and an opacity of around 16, 17. And all you need to do is, using the burn tool, reduce the brush size and just paint over the areas of shadow. Now you, you may need to do this a number of times for the effect to show through. I'm going to just paint down the side of Matt's face here just to get the outline of his beard. And you may think you're not having much of an effect, but if I turn this layer off, you can see it's already having quite a dramatic effect on, on Matt's face. So I'll just reduce my brush size slightly and I'll burn these little areas of hair in. And if you do make a mistake and you do slip over, it's simply a case of going to your paintbrush selecting your 50% gray, reducing your brush size, and just painting over, and that fixes the mistake. So we go back to our burn tool, and this time I'm gonna use a broader brush, because what I'm gonna do now, I'm just gonna paint a stroke down the side of Matt's face, just to bring out those shadows 
on the side of his jawline and the side of his head. And reduce the brush size. Just bring out the nose shadow. And I'm going to broaden my brush now and just bring out these shadows in Matt's neck. As you can see, effectively, we're just burning in the shadows just to give them a little bit more definition. Okay, and if I zoom out now, Control and Zero or Command and Zero on a Mac, and I'm going to increase the brush size, and I'm just going to burn down the side of Matt's arm. I think I'll do that twice and reduce the brush size slightly. There's just a little shadow on his forearm here. And increase the brush size. It is a case of looking at the size of a shadow area you need to fill and adjusting your brush size accordingly. And I'll just broadly go over these shadow areas in matte shirt and do the same down here. Now you can see I'm avoiding the baby. I think he looks great enough. Okay, just bring out those little shadows there a little bit more. And we'll scroll in, reduce my brush size. I'm just going to go in on a, Matt's pupils underneath the eye line. Just by his nostrils. Just bring out these little shadows around his smile. Reduce my brush size. Go across the lip line. Increase the brush size slightly and just bring out these shadows in Matt's ears. A little bit more there. And I think we're looking good on the shadow front. So now we need to go to the dodge tool and it's a similar process. Bring our opacity down to about 15% and increase our brush size and I'm going to start on the broad areas of highlights first you can see on Matt's forehead and top of his hair here our tonal range drop down is now at highlights and we've got 15% I'm just going to brush broad stroke on Matt's forehead here just to bring out that highlight there and reduce my brush size bring it down the ridge of his nose just on his cheeks here, over the top of his eyebrows, same on this side, just along his chin line. Now zoom in, and I'm going to go over this a few times, it's a highlight on his lip, I think about three strokes on that highlight just to bring it out, should be enough. Make the brush slightly broader now for the um, neck and chest. Get this little highlight on Matt's shoulder. And if I command and zero to zoom out, increase my brush size, and I just get this line of highlight down Matt's arm. And reduce the brush size just to bring out those highlights on Matt's shirt. A little bit more on his bicep there. I think this is bicep. My biology is not that great. I'll just bring out that little neck muscle there and his collarbone. And I'm going to go up to his hair now and reduce my brush size. And I'm just going to bring out these highlights. In his hair, a few on the sides. And we'll bring out the highlights in the ear. A little bit more in the forehead. And I'm going to reduce the brush size and just bring out those catch lights. And I'm going to brush around the iris just to bring out the brightness of his eyes and along the eyelid. And I'm going to go back to my burn tool now, just briefly. And it's going to run along his eyelash line just to bring out the eyelashes a bit more and return to the dodge tool and 
and we can now zoom out and I'm going to increase my brush size and I'm going to dodge an area of highlight along his forearm I'll zoom in on the hand reduce the brush size just looking at this highlight along his finger and I return to the dodge tool increase the brush size and it's going to extenuate the muscles in his hand and if I zoom out now I'll press control and zero to center the image and I'm just going to alt tab the original background so alt and tab that's where we started and that's where we've ended up so that's our starting image and that's where we've ended up and like I said I have over exaggerated this process just for the purposes of this tutorial one more thing we need to do now is to add a vignette layer and to do that I'm simply going to go to layer new life filter layer and I'm going to go down to vignette filter and you can see it's clipped the vignette to the pixel layer so we can now drop our exposure down and adjust our vignette to taste and in this case I want to have a shape that sort of surrounds the subjects so more of an ellipse and I'm going to soften the edge of my vignette and increase the size and one more thing I like to do I'll close that down to commit to that um, is make sure my vignette layer is highlighted by clicking on it and I'm going to paint a quick mask swap my colors around so and I'm painting in black black is to hide I'm going to increase my brush size and all I'm going to do is I'm going to take the vignette off the bottom to give the appearance of the vignette only being on the background so if I turn that layer off and turn it back on you can see the effect the vignette has had and you can see the effect we've had of burning and dodging on Matt's face and of course all of this is non-destructive we can remove that layer at any time as we can use this drop down and remove the vignette and we can return to that to edit as we see fit now if you found that tool useful what I've actually done is I've created a macro for you to use so you don't have to go through all of these steps and to use the macro you can simply go to the address in the description box below this video and download the a macro and to use it you simply need to go to view studio and macro and then you go to the import tab which is this little icon on the top right corner of the macro palette click on that locate the macro which you've downloaded double click it and all of the steps are there for you and you can then click on the box to add to library and that will automatically add the mac macro to your own macro library and you can save that using whatever name you see fit I just call it photo pop so then once you've got your macro loaded what I'll do is I'll just reset this whole image delete that this is our starting layer all you need to do is to click on play and affinity photo will automatically go through all of these steps for you and you can see there we've now got our image the way we like if you find the macro that I created is having too much of an effect on your image for instance it might be a little bit too sharp for your tastes it's simply a case of deleting the layers that you've just created and going back to your original photograph just by dragging those layers into the bin and then you can go to the filter that's causing you an issue you can click on it and make an adjustment to it and after you've made your adjustments you can go back to the macro and reapply it and it will take into account the adjustments you've made so once you've reapplied the macro you can then go into each of the individual layers for instance the dodge and burn layer and you can make further adjustments as you see fit or you can click on the vignette and you can increase and decrease the size of the vignette so I hope you found that uh, tutorial useful if you did please like and please subscribe to my channel thanks very much for watching bye